Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am gonna show you how to make one of my favorite cold weather comfort foods called Hashi Parmanche. Now this dish is made with seasoned ground beef that's then topped with mashed potatoes and of course sprinkled with Gruyere cheese, popped under the broiler until it gets nice and gooey and crispy. And the combination of all those flavors is just what you want on a cold winter's night. Now if you're not a meat eater, not to worry, you can enjoy a version of this dish with my vegan recipe for Hashi Parmanche and I'm gonna show you how to make that too. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is prep your potatoes. So I have four good size russet potatoes here, roughly about four pounds. And not to worry, you can get all the measurements in the description or you can also print the recipe on my website at entertainingwithbeth.com. Now the reason why you wanna use a russet is the russets are the ones that really make nice and fluffy mashed potatoes. And that's the kind we want. Now that all of our potatoes are peeled, the next thing you wanna do is cut them in half like so, and then I also like to cut them in quarters. I find this is the quickest way to cook a potato when they're boiling. So I have a large pot of water. I'm gonna add the potatoes to the water. Okay, so in addition to picking the russet potato, the other thing that will get you a fluffy potato is to put them in cold water. That way they come up to temperature when the water comes up to temperature. And that I have learned creates a fluffier mashed potato. There we go, we're gonna let that go. Meanwhile, we can create the meat filling. Okay, so you can really use any heat safe casserole for this recipe. Over the years, I have found that this type of pan works the best for me, only because I can cook the meat and the onions in here, I can put the potatoes on top, I can bake it, and then when I wanna pop it in the fridge because of the leftovers, I just put the top back on, put it in the fridge. The first thing you wanna do is add a tablespoon of olive oil into your skillet here. Then I have a cup and a half of diced white onion. There you go. Then we can season our onions with a little bit of salt and pepper just to taste. We're also gonna season the beef, but I find that if you just flavor every step of the recipe, you will end up with a much more flavorful dish. Then once your onions start to become nice and translucent and fragrant, then we're gonna add the beef. Cook the beef until it's completely cooked through. You can just brown it on all sides and mix it up there with the onions. Okay, now we are gonna season our meat. So we're gonna do at least a half a teaspoon of salt, some freshly cracked pepper, one and a half teaspoons of herbs to Provence. If you don't have this, you could just use a blend of basil, a little bit of dried oregano, some marjoram and parsley. And then I also like to add a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, which I know is not very French. In fact, when I buy it in France, I always laugh because it's labeled English sauce. <laughs> but. I think that Worcestershire sauce works a lot like a salt. Um, and in the case of any kind of meat, it just kind of gives it a heartier flavor. So I throw it in. I think it's also really good to add a tablespoon of freshly minced thyme. I always like to use a combination of dried and fresh herbs. I just find that it just makes it more flavorful. Okay, then the next thing we wanna do is add a quarter cup of a dry white wine. You could use Chardonnay, you could use a Sauvignon Blanc. If you don't drink, I would just leave it out. Or you could add a quarter cup of chicken broth if you wanted to add a little bit more flavor. And then we wanna add two cloves of garlic. If you're not that big of a garlic person, you could also just add one. I'm a really big garlic person, so <laughs> I always load it in there. Okay, our meat filling is ready to go. So we can just set this aside while we prep our mashed potatoes. If you ask my mother-in-law, she would not call them mashed potatoes. She would call them potato puree. And here's the difference. My American side would go with this for the mashed potatoes, but the French side goes with this, the ricer. And this is the thing that totally makes the most delicious mashed potato or potato puree. We first wanna begin with our butter. So I'm gonna put five tablespoons of butter in the bottom of my bowl. Then when we start to rice the potatoes, the heat from the potatoes will melt the butter and we won't need to bring out our electric mixer. Then I think it helps to use a slotted spoon to get your potatoes out. And this also saves you the step of having to pour it through a colander. I usually put two potatoes in at a time. You press down on the ricer and see it just rices out little pieces of potato, which makes it so smooth and creamy. <laughs> see me through the fog? <laughs> and then if you need to, you can go in with a knife and I just scrape it back into the little basket because then as you rice more potatoes, it'll just get worked through. All right, here we go. So now all you need to do is take a whisk and whip this up. So I just give it a turn just to make sure that the butter has melted at the bottom, which it has, which is great. And then we are going to add a half cup of milk. 
and it goes. Now, in the vegan version of this recipe, I'm gonna show you how to make a cauliflower mash. So if you're trying to eat a little less carb and you wanted to try a cauliflower mash, I was surprised by how delicious it is. So you can stay tuned for that. <laughs> then you're gonna add some salt. So in our house, we have quite the debate of how much salt is the perfect amount. <laughs> if you ask me, I would say a half a teaspoon, but my kids like a quarter teaspoon. They say it's too salty otherwise. So I don't know, you decide. Start with a quarter teaspoon and then taste it. And if you feel it needs more salt, just add some more salt. Okay, we are ready to assemble. The traditional French way to do this would be just to put the potatoes on top. And you could definitely do that and it would be delicious. Then you would have two layers, one of beef, one of potato. But my husband's family does this thing that he swears is the only way to eat it. <laughs> he thinks it's the best way, which is to take half of the potato mixture, put it into the beef, and stir this up to combine it. Because he says if the beef is dry, this actually helps with that. So he likes to have it mixed in first. Then you can just add the rest of the potatoes on top. And at first I thought this was like his invention until he told me his grandmother used to do it and I have seen his mother do it too. So, and they're from two different families. So I don't know, is this a French thing or is this like a Luminac thing? <laughs> Anybody of French heritage that knows this dish, leave me a comment and let me know and tell me is the mixing traditional or not? Then you are going to add a cup of just grated Gruyere cheese all over the top, which is quite delicious. I also think for most traditional hashi parmentier, they don't put the cheese on it. I haven't seen it done that way a lot in France, but it's definitely the Luminac way. <laughs> so. My husband will eat anything that's gratiné, so anytime I can add a little cheese to something, he's happy. And then I also like to finish with a little bit of just fresh thyme, which will bake in that way with the cheese, and it looks really pretty on top when it's done. And if you wanted to, you could also add just a little bit of freshly grated pepper. Okay, it is ready for the oven. So we're gonna put this in the oven uncovered at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20, 25 minutes, just until the cheese is melted. And then for the final three minutes, just pop it onto the broiler and let that cheese get nice and bubbly and golden brown. And when you dive into it, you will see how delicious it is with those creamy mashed potatoes, the seasoned beef, and of course that crispy bubbly cheese on top. You can serve it with a tossed salad. And I'll leave my recipe for my mother-in-law's foolproof French vinaigrette in the description. Okay, so now for the vegan version. So for this recipe, I'm gonna show you how to make these in these really cute individual cast iron skillets. But you could absolutely take this recipe and put it into one skillet too, not a problem. So to replace the meat filling, we are gonna be doing a combination of lentils, mushroom, parsley, and shallots, which is a really delicious mixture. And so the first thing you wanna do is get the lentils going because they do take about 20 minutes to cook. I like the French green lentils because they hold their shape after you cook them, and that just helps them work in this recipe a bit better. Okay, so I have my rinsed lentils here, and now there's lots of opinions, especially online, about what the proper ratio of lentils to water is. For me, I like three cups of water to one cup of lentils, so that's what we're gonna do. So in my pot here, I'm gonna add my water. Now that our, now that our water is boiling, we can add the lentils. And then just give them a stir and cover them and put them on a low simmer for about 20 minutes. But while our lentils are cooking, now we can cook our mushrooms and our shallots. You wanna add about a tablespoon of olive oil. And then to that, we're gonna add a cup of diced shallots. You could use onions, but I don't know. I feel like the shallots and the mushrooms just go really well together. Then I have two different types of mushrooms here. I have a cup and a half of just plain white button mushrooms. So we'll add those in as well. And then we're also gonna add a cup and a half of portobello mushrooms, which I think gives you a bit deeper mushroom flavor. A little bit of salt and pepper just to taste. No. And then we're also gonna go back to our herbs to Provence. We're gonna do a teaspoon and a half. And the longer you let the mushrooms cook and get browned, the deeper the flavor will be. So don't be afraid to really cook them down. Okay, then at this point, we're going to add a clove of garlic that you're just gonna mince, add that in. And then for a little freshness, we're going to add two tablespoons of freshly chopped parsley. And basically our mushroom mixture is done. So we're gonna let it just hang out here until the lentils are ready. Then we're gonna combine the two. And meanwhile, we can get working on our cauliflower mash. Okay, so cauliflower mash is a bit of a trend right now. You see it kind of everywhere. And I know why, because if you're craving potatoes, which are on a low carb diet, they are the perfect solution. They have a very similar texture to a potato with like way less carbs. 
you're basically gonna cook the cauliflower just like we did the potatoes. So I have a large pot of water here. I'm going to just add a little bit of salt, um, just because the cauliflower does not have much flavor. So anything you can do to sort of help it along is always a good idea. The other benefit of the cauliflower mash is you don't have to peel potatoes. So that is a big time savings and it cooks a lot quicker than potatoes. So this is gonna cook in about 10 minutes. You just wanna make sure you have enough water in your pot so that the cauliflower is submerged. Then you wanna cover it, put it on a medium high flame and let it go for 10 minutes. Our cauliflower is done. We are now going to drain them and put them in this food processor. This is really the best way I have found to blend up the cauliflower. You can also use a blender. I don't actually drain it because I like to have a little bit of water in the cauliflower because that way it actually helps it blend up a bit better. <laughs> okay, then we're also gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil. I like to add the olive oil because I find that it gives the cauliflower a really nice silky smooth texture. And then we're gonna add some vegan butter for the flavor. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons, okay? And then we're gonna just season with some salt and some pepper. Okay, let's puree this up. You can see it really does have the texture of like a mashed potato. Okay, our lentils are done and now we're gonna add them to our mushroom mixture. So oftentimes it'll just soak up all the water, but if you have a little bit of water left in there, sometimes I think it's good just so that it gets a little bit saucy. Okay, and then I'm gonna fill my little cast iron skillets here. Then you can add your cauliflower mash on top. I usually do about two good dollops. And I don't actually cover the whole thing with it because I think there's something pretty about the little lentil mixture peeking through. <laughs> they can see what's coming. Now, if you're concerned about your cauliflower mash being a little bit runny, this is the perfect solution, is to put it in the oven, which is something we have to do anyway. So to heat this all back up, I pop this in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for just about 10 to 15 minutes, just so that the lentils get warmed through and the cauliflower reheats. And in doing so, the moisture from the cauliflower gets wicked out and it actually dries out and becomes even more fluffy. But if you have runny cauliflower mash and you're just eating the mash, you can also pop it in the microwave for a minute or two too, and that will also release some of its moisture and make it a little bit more fluffy. Well, I hope you enjoyed my two versions of Hashi Parmentier. For more of my French recipes, you can click the playlist here. And for more vegan vegetarian recipes, you can click the playlist there. And I'll see you over there. Bye.